did you know that you can use obesity as a way to get more VA disability compensation? Welcome to Battle Buddy Ben. In this episode, we're going to go over how you use obesity to get more VA disability compensation and what you need to do to claim it. First, let's go over what is considered obese. So according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, a person is considered to be overweight or obese if they have a weight that is higher than what is considered as a healthy weight for a given height. This standard of a healthy weight is determined through the use of body mass index or BMI. And you can see the, the chart below. BMI takes a person's weight in kilograms and measures that against the person's height. BMI on its own is not a comprehensive indicator of obesity as it fails to take into account the overall health of the individual as well as the level of body fat. The CDC recognizes this and encourages healthcare providers to look at other factors when determining if someone is obese or overweight. So what does that mean? It means that yeah, the BMI is a good standard way to see if you are at risk for being obese or if you are obese. Uh, this is what the VA uses, what Social Security uses. This is what many health insurance, many health providers use as a way to determine if you are obese. Again, it says that it doesn't take everything into account. I could be you know, look skinny, but have a BMI of over 30 because maybe shorter, but I might be more stocky and it's not taking into account everything you know that the person has. So again, I might weigh, say here on this table, if I... If I'm height in meters, say 1.8, but I weigh 210 because I am just so muscular, I'm going to be considered obese, even though I have a six pack. You know, it, it, it's possible, but theoretically, if you are a BMI of at least 25 or higher, you are probably as ripped or as muscly as the normal person is on average. And we're talking about the average because there are many cases. There's an infinite possible number of cases out there. But this is a table that the doctors will use to determine if you are obese. If you're finding this information useful and helpful, hit that like button, subscribe button, and check out my website. Hitting the like and subscribe button allows other veterans who may have questions or concerns about obesity from their time in service to get the answers that they need and claim VA disability compensation because of it. And check out my website for good information, templates, and links that are very useful for your journey through the claims process. So can you claim for obesity? So the VA de defines a disability for the purpose of receiving disability compensation as a disease or injury that results in a veteran's loss of earning capacity. Once VA grants service connection for a disability, it will be, it will assign a disability rating based on the symptoms and severity of that condition. Disabilities rating in the VA schedule and are assigned based on severity and disability ranging from 10 to 100%. Not all diseases and disabilities are listed in there. And these conditions are, will typically be given analogous ratings. BCD falls into that category. In order to be considered a disability, the VA must determine that the condition such as obesity is a chronic qualifying disability for VA compensation purposes, which typically means that the condition results in a loss of earning capacity for the veteran. However, at this time, the VA does not consider obesity to be a disability for compensation purposes because in most cases, obesity can be cured. You change your diet, you can exercise. And so that's just the first part. We're going to get into additional parts of obesity later and how you can use it to claim disability, potentially maybe not for a direct service connection because for a direct service connection, you have to have a, a, in, you know, a nexus in your medical records. And if you are obese, you have the potential to fail your fitness test or annual or semi-annual fitness test that there, there's going to be stuff that that's leading up to this and the military expects you to keep your body in a shape that is ready for combat battle or whatever you need to do to be fit for duty additionally to obtain service connection for a disability a veteran must show that there was an event in service that caused their con current condition to va an event is a discrete instance from service and VA states that obesity is a condition that occurs over time and results from multiple factors such as environment and physical and dietary habits. So obesity cannot be attributed to a single event or instance. So how do you claim it? So the, the, the way that you would use obesity as a way, and we're going to kind of go over here, 
is that you use what they call an intermediate step. So the idea behind obesity as an intermediate step in obtaining service connection is one that VA has even recognized as legitimate. In a January 2017 memo from the VA's Office of General Counsel, the VA states that obesity may be an intermediate step between a service-connected disability and a current disability that may be service-connected on a secondary basis. In the case of obesity as an intermediate step, it can be useful to think of it as a bridge connecting a veteran service-connected disability to the disability they developed due to their obesity. Here's an example. So let's go over the example. A veteran has a service-connected back condition which results in him being unable to walk more than a few feet, bend, or do any strenuous physical activity, he is not able to exercise with his back condition and must spend most of his days inactive or else he experiences severe pain. As a result of his inactivity, he has put on weight and is considered to be obese. His obesity then led to him develop hypertension, a condition for which being overweight or obese can put a person at risk of developing. His obesity was the result of a service-connected condition, his back, and then it led to him to, to develop a non-service-connected condition, hypertension. For this scenario, his obesity could act as an intermediate step to obtaining service connection for hypertension. This, is, this scenario, maybe not just your back, it could be anything with your legs, it can be feet, it could be, you can even use mental conditions for this. Your mental conditions prevent you from going outside or performing certain activities, and now you just sit around and you're gaining weight, and then you develop hypertension, you develop other like COPD, whatever the case is, and then you you can use that as a sec you can use this as an intermediate step obesity as an intermediate step to those secondary conditions which will help you get your connection to that direct service connected condition so before you even think about filing a claim that uses obesity so here in this 2017 memo again outline the three part test for obesity as an intermediate step in order for obesity to be considered an intermediate step the following three steps must be shown uh, whether the service-connected disability caused the veteran to become obese? If yes, then if the obesity that resulted from the service-connected disability was a substantial factor in the veteran developing the non-service-connected disability, whether the veteran's non-service-connected disability would not have occurred but for obesity caused by their service-connected disability. So you got to think about that. You got to ask that. You got to maybe even talk to your your doctor about this so that you can understand and write that into either statements and supports of claims or have your, your doctor write you a, a medical letter, you know, an IMO or a nexus letter, say, hey, this is connected to this service connection disability and this is I it's at least as likely connected to that. So what do you need? Again, we're, we're talking about trying to prove stuff to the VA. So you're going to need the evidence. So you need the current diagnosis for whatever your secondary condition is that you're going to use obesity as an intermediate step for. You're going to need that uh, the, you know, from authorized medical professional, a uh, description of the in-service occurrence. So you're going to want to link that back to your service. Kind of, so two and three, go link it back to that direct service connected disability. And then number four, your statements in support of claim, how is this affecting you? And how is it impairing your ability to hold gainful employment or be social and live a normal life? So that's your statements in support of claim. If you have any comments or questions about filing for obesity or using as obesity as an intermediate step for a secondary claim, please place them in the comment section or send me an email at contact at battlebuddyben.com. If you like what you viewed, hit that like and subscribe button and let others know about this video. Hitting that like and subscribe button puts this video in front of other veterans or other caretakers or other people who know veterans that might have questions or, or concerns about this topic. Check out my website. I have a lot of great links, templates, and information on it. The website is battlebuddyben.com. It's also on the screen. Keep working hard and good luck with your claims.